Hey, if you're watching this, you know you've already got the most modular knife that's ever been introduced to the American market. Let's step into the bench and show you how to take your standard two-layer knife and go to a monoplane or the dry decker. If uh, you've bought one of those kits and you've used your QR code and you've scanned into this video, that's what you're here for. So let's hop to it. Okay, guys, um, you know if you've purchased an ASK knife, they all come in a standard configuration. This is our Jefferson. It's a two-layer model. I wanted to show you these are expandable currently into a dry decker and into a monoplane. So we've got the one, two, and three layer configured, uh, configured knives. What we're going to do today is take a two layer configuration and drop it down to a single layer configuration. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, for now, let's get this um, some of these knives out of the way that we don't need here. We're going to start with our standard Jefferson. Um, what you're going to need for that is you're going to need a Torx bit. This is a T25 Torx bit for the new hardware. You always know when you've got the most current hardware because it's got our six gun with a deep square hole, indexing hole, uh, and it's uh, the smaller T25. So we're gonna take it apart with the T25. To put it back together, you're gonna need some Loctite stick. I recommend not using the liquid. I recommend using the paste. If you use the liquid, it has a tendency, if you're not used to working with it all the time, of wicking down into here and getting up on the plastic, and it's no good up on the plastic. The uh, Loctite can be a little problematic. I also think you should have a little prying tool. I happen to really like the chisel. Uh, that comes out of the standard model, but you can use just about anything for this. You could use a uh, pair of glasses, uh, a glasses uh, a screwdriver, or any little old kind of dull chisel or something with a little pry capability. Um, the kit you're going to get for this to go to a monoplane from your biplane that you get your standard two layer to your uh, single layer uh, version of the knife. You're going to get in it four pieces of hardware. These are all custom made here in the U.S. You've got uh, two uh, titanium Swiss turn main pivot bolts and you've got a, a thin hardened blade stop and a main spring pivot a main spring pivot so let's go through and take the knife apart and we're gonna work these pieces in here the ultimate goal of this is let's say you carry a uh, everyday carry like I, I carry a, uh, an M48 and you don't really need a blade you just want as little as possible of a knife with maybe a couple of specific tools on it you might want to yank this apart and not have it be a pocket knife have it just be a tool chassis or you just want it to be a pocket knife and you want to get rid of this other stuff because the only thing you need is a blade and you wear dress pants, you want something really minimal imprint. Let's take it apart first. First things first, pop the screws out. These screws are, they have a draft angle on the side that matches the molded plastic draft angle. It's a very sophisticated meeting of materials. You're going to reuse these screws, so don't hog them out and booger them up. Next thing you do is just kind of, you may need to get your fingernail underneath the edge. Just catch a little bit of this and pop your plastic side off. Why don't you set it off to the side so you don't scratch it. Now everything in here is precision fit and it's under spring tension. So these won't just lift off with your fingers. They're intended to be kind of snug. And the reason they need to be snug is if they're not snug, there's going to be wiggle and play everywhere. Now I use one of our tools to do this. You know, as a matter of fact, I think we're going to make a cool tool for doing a teardown and put together. I use a full whip, eighth inch something, just to give me a little space. I put the wedge in here, and I slide it down, and you'll feel it kind of pop and release as it comes around. I just want to work my way around the whole knife, popping everything loose. As soon as it pops loose, now you can kind of, you want to work it all up evenly. You don't want to work one side up or the other. Now you'll notice some dark grease inside here. We use a really special, very, it's almost a black grease, and you don't want to get rid of all of that. So don't wipe it up and clean it. It's not actually dirty. Leave that in. First things, turn the knife so that the spring is facing away from you like it is facing away from me. Even though it's towards you right now, it's not ideal for disassembly. Pull out the tool, kind of stabilize the whole blade the whole knife without getting your thumb down into the blade. And you just kind of pull this up and pop it off. We're not gonna put that in, so I'll leave that off to the side. We'll do the same thing with our chisel. Stabilize, pop it off, leave it off to the side. Now you've got a spring, not under tension. We'll remove that spring. 
that's not going to come back on the knife as we go to a single stack. At this point now, you open up the blade and you can grab this little pin and pull it out, the little blade stop pin. If you can't quite get it with your fingers, you can grab a pair of pliers and gently grab onto it. You don't want to be all hogging it around though. That's not going to go back on the knife, so we'll set that off to the side. Don't close the knife now. The blade will smack and hit here, but you need that pin out of there so you can kind of work this titanium center spacer out. So you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of working it up a little bit at a time, all the way around, so I'm not doing damage to anything. You don't want to be torquing on the chassis and galling the uh, titanium. As soon as it pops loose, you'll hear it pop. Then you can lift it off the center, work it off the final end, that piece. So to go from a double stack to a single stack, most of the knife doesn't go back on practically. Now we're gonna pop the knife off. Oops, let's put that back over here. And the reason we pop the knife off is you have to unload the spring. There's still tension between the spacer and the pivot. You're gonna remove the pivots anyway, so take a little pressure off and see if you can push that. Sometimes you can't get that out. Let's, uh, let me grab just a pair of needle nose pliers. We'll grab on here, and pull that out. We're gonna reuse one of those springs. And now we're gonna take out the pivots. Now these pivots, they are on here. So you're gonna have to work these out. Sometimes if they're really tight, what you have to do is you gotta kinda put them down on a flat surface and gently with balanced pressure all around them, push till they pop up. And that's because we make these with really tight tolerances, guys. Work this thing out. If you need to, push there and pop it out. Sometimes there's just a little sharp edge and it makes it uh, very resistant to, to flowing out of there. We've pulled our two main pivots out. We're not gonna use those. We're using one of the springs, the back spacer, our four new pieces of hardware. Um, the liner we initially took off, the liner that exists here, the blade, and no tools. Everything else you see here, this is what comes off your knife. I recommend taking all of that before you do anything else and put it into a bag nice and neat so you don't lose anything. These little pins, they have a tendency to hit the ground and disappear. If you do drop a pin on the ground, get yourself a flashlight, turn off the lights in the room and shine the flashlight across the floor and you'll see it, it'll pop right up. But if you drop it in shag carpet, as uh, Austin Powers says, you're probably screwed. So take them and bag them up and get them a little out of the way so you don't knock the parts on the floor. Now we've got what's left to do the single stack assembly of the knife, okay? And we've got our new parts, spacer, and our original screws. So let's take the base chassis, let's put our new pivots in it. It's really precision so that you don't get play everywhere. Okay, once those are in, you want to put your main spring pivot in. Okay, then you want to drop your main spring onto it. You don't want to, again, don't wipe off any of the grease. You'll regret doing that. Don't put the blade on first. Put the um, spacer in first. Now, if you bought a breaker and you want to put a breaker on like we have on this knife here, this would be the time to do that, okay? If you're just going to put the original flush spacer back in, you want to make sure that you'll see here a real skinny side and a fat side to this. The fat side goes against the spring. Think about this, okay? The skinny side is to leave room for the blade to close here and not hit. If you put this in flipped around, the geometry will be really clunky and the blade edge will hit here and you'll, you'll sully your edge. So now we've got to get this blade underneath the spring. Now, if you guys are doing this to your knife, it's a sharp knife. So I recommend a piece of painter's tape. And I recommend before you do this, don't be a cowboy. If you don't do this every day, they're slippery and it could be a little awkward and it can give you 10 stitches really fast. I recommend you just put a piece of tape around it. I know it seems a little corny, 
put a little piece of tape around it, an ounce of prevention's worth of pound of cure. These are surgical sharp, they'll cut you right through the bone, they'll go right through your tendons, and it'll ruin the fun you're having with your knife. Once you get it to here, you'll find this mainspring out. This mainspring is very hard to do barehanded. So what you can do is use your little driver, just push in right here, hold it up at an angle, about 45 degrees, blade away from you, tape on it, put this into the notch, not pushing into the plastic, you push down and drop the blade in. I'm gonna show you one more time so you can see that. I'm gonna control the spring, pull the blade off. I can't quite push that in, my thumb's not quite strong enough, it hurts like hell, plus that's what separates man from ape, is tools. We'll push right here, drop that piece in, now it's laying reasonably flush. Next thing we'll do, we're gonna put the dirty side, you can see the grease on here, we'll put the dirty side of the original chassis. You'll set it in on the knife, get it in on the main back spacer, and now you've gotta push it and get it to drop in. Hear that click? Now you get it to all lay flat, and what you'll see, we call in the machining world, we say these are a little proud. These are sticking up proud right now. Now on the side of the blade, with the blade at 90 degrees, take your thin pin, Thin pin will go in right here. That's your blade stop. So that engages the tang of your knife that you can't see that's in the handle in the closed position and stops the blade from slapping into your um, into your back spring. Now, me personally, at this point, I close the blade. If you've dropped this little pin, you won't be able to get to the nail nick. That's one of the things. If the nail nick is not prominent, you screwed up and forgot the pin and maybe put a little flat spot on your blade. Once that's done, it's under nice equal pressure. I always like to have the, uh, the crest logo on the pivot side of the knife, not on the tip side. So when you go to put the other side back on the knife, moving all over here, see there's a little recess. When you see inside here, you'll see a little Liberty Snake. You'll see some grid coordinates. Why don't you guys put in the grid coordinates in your computer and tell me where you think that is. Um, you'll see Liberty or Death. You'll see Established 1776 America. So there's Easter eggs on the f inside that are just a little bit of fun for you guys. A little, little inside joke. <laughs> All right, now you set these down in place and you'll feel that the handle indexes because of the proud pins that were sticking up. At this point is where you want to put a little bit of lock tight on your screw. You don't want to use a lot. You want to use about that much. So it's just a, uh, in official engineering terms, it's an RCH, it's a real kit in here. Now you really want to put enough on there to fill two threads all the way around down into the space once you screw it together. We'll drop that in. Once that's in, I'm gonna tell you guys how to tune your knife once we have these reasonably together. Take the second screw, little kitten hair of Loctite. This is your original screw you got with your knife. You've now taken your multi-tool little thing and you've made it into a go to the uh, go to the ballet, and you're, you can throw this in your tux and have a nice little knife with you. Now, I like to screw it down until I feel everything seat and I feel any space. Sometimes when you put the screws in from the other side, they're sticking up a little proud, they haven't seated all the way. So I screw these down. I don't make a monkey tighter, you will crack your sides. I just feel, you'll be screwing down and screwing down and screwing, and it, it, you'll feel like, boom, you hit a bump and you're like, you can't go any further. You could go further and ruin the part, or you can just back up a royal kitten hair from there. Watch how I back up, and I kind of feel Real light, I feel right where it starts to hit tension and I stop. We want the knife when we open it up to open smoothly, have proper snap, proper stop, and then I like the knife to close somewhere, you know, around 40 degrees or so, and it should slap shut on its own. If you've done that, that's tuned your knife. If you find your knife is sticking a little bit, so let's do it a little bit wrong. Let's seat this down too tight. You'll be able to pull it open, like, ah, oh, it doesn't feel good. Ah. So you just loosen it a little bit. And you're gonna find a spot. Now, it's engaging the plastic around the outside so that it fits real precise, but what I wanna do is, 
tighten it down to that seat, open the knife till it's about 40 degrees or so, and then gently just back, loosen it. So once it's act, once it's acting proper, grab onto the blade and see if you get any play. And I don't get any play, it feels really nice. You feel it jerking out of your hands, doing what it's supposed to do. So that's taking your double, double layer knife and stripping it down and rebuilding it into a monoplane from ASK. What a cool thing to do to be able to take your, uh, your, your kind of uh, chunky multi-tool and turn it into a really uh, slim gentleman's, you know, Sunday go to meet and pocket knife.